uh, with an electrical charge. Well, now the ozone is crumbling, so have fun with that, Janet. Well, they're not, well, they're not sending it through the ozone. They're not, like, <laughs> launching water up into the sky through the ozone and then catching it as it comes back down. <laughs> That's not what they're doing. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 74 of Gulp and Nosh. My name is Alex. What she said. <laughs> Today we are drinking Johnny Ryan grape soda. Now I, I I was drawn to this because they put their label in multi languages, so it looks like English on the top and then French on the bottom. But grape in English is raisin, I guess. So to me, it was like raisin soda. Aren't raisins just grapes? Just dried grapes? Like, is there a difference when you make it into a soda? I mean, um, golden, gold, red raisins. I can't are, speak for a second. Are like green grapes, right? No. They're sun-dried grapes. It changes their color and makes them taste different. Hmm. Yeah, it's really just a grape soda, but I was like, raisin soda, and then upon looking at the label later, was like, oh, it's just like two different languages, so it's not really raisin soda, uh, it's just grape soda, which I guess raisin soda would just be grape soda, but either just, way. It's like taking, it just sounds like grape soda with extra steps, you take the liquid out of the raisin, <laughs> and then put it back in to make it into a drink. <laughs> Grape soda with extra steps. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Johnny Ryan was founded in 1935 by the Janik brothers, Stephen, Walter, and John. Uh, they are currently still owned by the Janiks in the third generation of Janiks. John, Janik. John Janik, Jingleheim Schmidt. Maybe? Okay. No? Um, the Janik brothers began by selling bottled water. Uh, they sold it in five-gallon jugs to local plants and um, offices during the Great Depression. They would purify it using ozonation, which is a process where you send the water through an ozone generator system uh, uh, with an electrical charge. Well, now the ozone is crumbling, so have fun with that, Janet. Well, they're not, well, they're not sending it through the ozone. They're not, like, <laughs> launching water up into the sky through the ozone and then catching it as it comes back down. <laughs> That's not what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's, this is how we purify our water. We just fire it up into the sky so far that it goes through the ozone and then we just catch it in a big tub as it comes back down. And somehow the water bottle doesn't smash. Wouldn't it freeze if it went through the ozone? It would be in space. So wouldn't it then like freeze or something? I'm pretty sure it wouldn't even fall. Well, there's different levels. Like, technically, when you're out of the ozone, you're, I think, technically in space, but you're still, like, Have within the atmosphere you know. enough that... Yeah, there was that dude that, like, jumped from the highest, parach like, free fall parachute jump or whatever from the highest, where he was, like, technically in space, but he, he jumped, like, so high it was, like, above the atmosphere or something. Like, he had to wear, like, a space suit with, like, an oxygen tank and stuff. Damn. Yeah. Don't say swears. That's not swears. Damn is a swear. Can you say it at school? I don't know. No. The answer is no. You can't say it at school. I've Before it's a swear. I've, I've heard people say it at school. 
Did the teacher teacher hear them say it? Yeah. And they didn't get in trouble for it? No. What kind of school system are you going to? Shush, I was sitting next to this one kid and they were talking and they said damn like 50,000 times. And there was a teacher standing right behind us talking to my friend who was sitting right next to me. Why are you talking like talking to my friend? (laughs) <laughs> just say the whole word. And the teacher even, like, looked over at them, like, glanced over at them, and she didn't say anything. Well, <laughs> I'm going to be removing you from that school no. and putting you in a high-priced uh, bordering border school. What do you call those? I don't know. A border school? <laughs> Maybe that's for dogs. <laughs> I don't know. What do you? Yeah, bo- boarding school. That's it. Boarding, not border. <laughs> yeah, uh, a private school where where that will not. Be, you will be wrapped over the knuckles if you swear. Now I'm just imagining somebody walking into a border school, and it's just like a bunch of dash heads wearing I top hats <laughs> and monocles. I don't know if border school is for dogs. <laughs> I don't know, but you said it was. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to send you to a dog school if you don't <laughs> knock it off. I so. would love that. Well, you might not learn that much, but you will learn to sit and speak and roll over. So, I can already do all play this. dead. Well, then you're going to, it's going to be a breeze. Straight A's, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so they sold bottled water during the Great Depression. And Walter had a day job uh, driving a delivery truck for Coca-Cola. And then Coca-Cola in 1935 stopped making their multi-flavored line of drinks. And they're like, we're just going to concentrate on cola. So... The Janix, they've got this process for for filtering water, and they have this open possibility in the market, and they think, yeah, let's fill that fill that void. Coca Cola is going to stop. Let's swoop in there and make um, flavored sodas. They started by selling them in ten ounce bottles instead of seven ounces um, to like I guess capitalize on we're bigger than the competition. Because everybody was doing seven ounce bottles, which we also um, had somebody do that. It was a hippo size? Bing! Click on that link. Yeah. That um, that also did that. And then wasn't there another one that sold their bottles in like mama size, daddy size, and baby size? Yeah. When I figure out what that company was, Bing! Click on that video as well. So anyway, they did that, and they named their company uh, Extra Bottling Company to, like, you know, give the message to, like, we're giving you extra. And um, then uh, a little while later, John Janik, the grandfather of the three brothers, um, said that he thought the business would do better. Janik? What? John Janik. Yeah, there's lots of Johns. Yeah, there's no John Janik bought the company, but John Janik, his grandfather, and it's currently owned by a John Janik too. There's multi, multiple levels of John here. So anyway, John Janik, the grandfather to John Walter and Stephen Janik, the brothers that owned it, said, "Hey, I think business will do better if you give it a real Irish name," and um, they decided on Johnny Ryan, which was. Um, the grandfather's two oldest sons. So it would be their dads. Johnny. John and Ryan were their dads. And John uh, gave birth to or not gave birth John to gave birth to John, who gave birth to John, who gave birth to John and then gave birth to another John. So I th- right now it's owned I think by like the fifth John. John the Fifth, I would assume. Oh gosh. And there's there's another brother. I didn't write down the current owners. There are two two of the Janix still currently run it to this day. Uh, but yeah, multiple levels of John. Lots and, of uh, levels yeah. of John. Um, this history was uh, overwhelmingly provided by an article written by Margaret M. Tuhi 
in Buffalo Spree magazine or buffalospree.com writing about the Buffalo, New York area. So thanks, Margaret, because your history was much more extensive than Johnny Ryan's his own history on their website. And uh, now let's try it. Raisin soda. Can you taste the, the effort put into it? Tastes like raisins. <laughs> Which taste like grapes? How dare you insult the raisin name? <laughs> raisins wish they were they were grapes. <laughs> they were grapes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> then humans degraded them. They oh, they dehydrated them. <laughs> That so was much a good joke. That was a good joke. <laughs> they degraded them. No, they dehydrated. That was a good joke. <laughs> you gotta give it to me. Uh, it's a quality uh, it's grape soda, I think. Tastes like a good grape soda. Now, how does this stand up to new grape, Fago, other grape sodas that we might have had that I can't remember? This isn't as offensively sweet chemically as Fake. New Grape. But I love New Grape. So this is a little bit more genuine grape flavor. Certainly not like a juice, you know. It's certainly still very sweet. Very, very sweet grape soda. Can you taste the space water in it? Yes. Okay. Get yourself a greasy slice of New York pizza and a Johnny Ryan grape soda, and you're going to have a good night. I think that's what we're saying. Now I want pizza. Why'd you have to say that? Sorry about that. Hit up the D box below for a link to our Discord and our email if you'd like to talk to us, as well as a link to our merch our Patreon, and our Streamlabs if you would like to donate. <coughs> That's all. Goodbye. Stare at him.